says, as the deer pants for streams of water, so my soul pants for you, my God. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. Hallelujah. When can I go and meet with God? Deep calls to deep. In the roar of your waterfalls, all your waves and breakers have swept over me. By day the Lord directs his love, at night his song is with me, a prayer to the God of my life. Why, my soul, are you disturbed within me? Put your hope in God, for I will yet praise him, my Savior and my God. Lord God, we gather in the house today to say, Lord, we long to see your face. Lord, we long to worship you. Lord, as a deer pants for water, Lord, our souls thirst for you, O oh God. We thank you for Jesus Christ, our Savior, who is the living water, who quenches every thirst, O oh God. And as we come into the house today, Lord, we proclaim that we love you, Lord, that you are our God and we are your people. And Lord God, we beg of you to give us this water. We thank you, God, that when we seek you with our whole hearts, Lord, we will find you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <clears throat> and we rejoice today, God, for those who have come seeking. We thank you that you promised to meet us at the appointed time. And so, Lord God, we open ourselves to you and we invite you to have your way today. Move in this house, oh God. Shine your glory in this place. Touch every heart that is gathered here in, Lord God. Let them know they have been in the presence of God. Hallelujah. As we open up our mouths, oh God, and declare your name, let the praise come forth, oh Lord. We give it all to you. We submit ourselves to you. And we invite you to have your way today. In the mighty name of Christ Jesus, our Savior. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Give God some praise today, church. Y'all might have praise. The Lord is worthy of our praise. Hallelujah. God is worthy of our praise. There is none like our God who loves us with an everlasting love. For God has given all to us. Dr. David Emmanuel Goldley, who is our guest speaker for this year. 
He is the president of Fuller Theological Seminary, and so we are pleased to have him coming all the way from Pasadena, California. Amen. And then the first Sunday in September, what's the first Sunday in September? <laughs> Pastor's anniversary, 16 years with New Horizons. Matthew chapter verses 21 to 22. 
Jesus replied, Surely I tell you, if you have faith and do not doubt, not only can you do what was done to the fig tree, but also you can see this to the mountain. Go throw yourself into the sea and it will be done. I take this verse as telling us to put our faith into him, and I have so much faith in our Lord above, which is another reason why I want to be baptized. I know when I go down into the waters and come back up, I will officially be the Lord's child. I would like... <laughs> I would like to start off and say God is good. Yes.
when I got, I, I called a couple people, and my sister came, and she picked me up, and I had to go to the high school to get his daughter, and she's 16, to tell her, because before she's seen it on social media, you know how things get leaked. And my sister and I were gone for about, I don't know, 40 minutes, not even, and when I got back to my house, my house was full of every living, like all of my brothers and sisters, every friend that I had from when my childhood friends, they were there when I got So then, my son had no insurance, and my sister and I went to the funeral shop, and I bought it. And so we're at the funeral home, and I just had a really big sense of peace because of the way everything was happening. I knew God was with me, and I knew God took my son. So we're at the funeral home and he had no insurance and I had no money. And I am shocked. My sister's so worried. Because, you know, if I create a bill, she knows what's happening after that. And it's come to her. So I had to explain to her that God is with me through this and that she has to relax because I'm going to plan the funeral that I want to plan. And if God's got it, it's going to be okay. So I planned the funeral, and I went ahead and go find me paid. I got $5,000. The funeral came with $16,000. The funeral's paid for. And I knew that it would be. And God just got me through this. He's still getting me through this because I'm still going through it. But just because of the favor and the love that I know, that not just because he shows me, but he took my son. I, he, it's like he came down personally to pick him up and take him. And I know God is good. But he came to get my son after I prayed. He wouldn't come get my son to take him nowhere else. He's good. But he don't deliver people to other places. So I know. And just from all of that, I owe God everything. And he's still getting me through. And I'm so thankful for all of the love and the support that I have from all of my family and my friends. I know that I'm so blessed, but I do know that I'm not responsible for anything good in my life. Everything that's good in my life is because of God.
praying for them that they would cling to the Lord Jesus because he made a promise to them to never leave them nor forsake them. And so that they would pray that they would always cling to them and he would always be by their side. Let us pray. Father, we come to you this afternoon and say thank you, God, for who you are. And that you have given us the best gift possible. You, has given, you have given us the gift of your Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, so that we might have eternal life with you. Now, this morning, Lord, we ask that you would bless the offerings that are being brought to you today. We ask you to bless the giver. We ask you to multiply the gifts, Lord, so that everything that you have planned for New Horizons Baptist Church will be realized. Now, again, Lord, we ask that you bless the giver and the gift. Use it all unto your honor and to your glory. In Jesus' mighty and precious name, we give you thanks. Amen.
the Horizons Baptist Church, Heavenly Father, because we have four that have come to the cross, Heavenly Father. They couldn't have made a better decision, Heavenly Father. Look down upon them, Heavenly Father, and us as members, Heavenly Father, that we will continue to guide and lead them, yeah. keep them on track, yeah. and so that when they do, they do fall by the wayside, Heavenly Father, we pray that you bring them back, Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father, look down upon those who are sick and afflicted. Yes. Look down upon those who have lost loved ones, Heavenly Father. And Heavenly Father, just look down upon the youth, uh, this social media, uh, the world, this, with the social media, Heavenly Father. Yes. It is just so much badness going on with the social media that is uh, oppressing our youth, Heavenly Father. We pray that they just keep their eyes focused on you, Heavenly Father. Social media is not you, is not God. It will destroy you if um, you don't have enough faith in God and trust God to uh, just lead you and guide you in this world, Heavenly Father. Look down upon those leaders in, the, in this um, world, Heavenly Father. Oh, there's so much corruption going on, Heavenly Father. I ask that you just touch some of their so souls, Heavenly Father that they may turn their eyes upon you, Heavenly Father. This world is not our home. We're just passing through here. So we want to make our call in the next shore in Christ Jesus, the Lamb forevermore. And Heavenly Father, I ask you to strengthen me, make me a better Christian, that something that I may say today might touch someone's heart, Heavenly Father. Look down upon the elders of the church, Heavenly Father, and I stand and thank you for the ones that are still here, Heavenly Father, we thank you. Thank you for them, Heavenly Father. Thank you for um, Sister Wanda for being here, Heavenly Father, our choir member. Look down upon Sister jo Johanna Cromwell, Heavenly Father, who had lost her son, Heavenly Father. Just strengthen and lead and guide them, Heavenly Father. Let them know that you are there. They know you're there, Heavenly Father. Once again, Heavenly Father, I thank you for this opportunity. Thank you for written clergy of the church, deacons, and ministers, Heavenly Father. And look down upon those are still going through the anxiety of the pandemic, Heavenly Father. There's people that are still depressed and they have their fear of this um, pandemic, Heavenly Father. Like you said, the plagues and the pestilence will come, Heavenly Father. We have to put our faith in you, Heavenly Father, and trust you. And you you're the only one that we can trust to bring us through all these things, Heavenly Father. And so I thank you once again. Hopefully everyone will arrive home safely. Once again, congratulations to the new members, Heavenly Father. We will continue to pray for them. In the name of your son, Jesus, I pray. Brother Carl, um, we're so grateful for your ministry and this thank you that you've come alongside of us to use your gifts in ministry. And I am pleased to uh, extend this right hand of fellowship to our New Horizons. Baptist Church with all rights and privileges as a member. Uh, Sister Christy Lee, uh, and, and two, I know you've been very, uh, you found your talent in your, your ministry. I know you were uh, great with the social committee, helping them out with it whenever they uh, need any assistance. So on behalf of our pastor and our congregation, I wish to extend your right hand of fellowship to you as a member of New Horizons Baptist Church with all of the rights and privileges.
Pleasant Baptist Church. I just stand my right hand in fellowship to you as a member of a New Horizons Baptist Church with all the rights and the privileges.
What a powerful, what a beautiful one. The scripture lesson today comes from Acts chapter 1. We share from Acts chapter 4 last week when we step back to chapter 1, the first eight verses of chapter 1 in the book of Acts, the Acts of the Apostles. In my former book, Theophilus, I wrote about all that Jesus began to do and to teach until the day he was taken up to heaven after giving instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostles he had chosen. After his suffering, he presented himself to them and gave many convincing proofs that he was alive. He appeared to them over a period of 40 days and spoke about the kingdom of God. On one occasion, while he was eating with them, he gave them, th he gave them this command. Do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift my father promised, which you have heard me speak about. For John baptized with water, but in a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Then they gathered around him and asked, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom of Israel? He said to them, it is not for you to know the times or dates the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. Consider this pericope and this charge of Jesus to his disciples and meditate with me for just a few moments on the thought. Tell somebody. Tell somebody. Let us pray. Lord God, now in this the moment of proclamation, we invite you to open up this word to our understanding and our hearts are grateful, God, that you care enough to send us a word. We pray, Lord God, that our, that our minds receive it, that our hearts believe it, and Lord, that you will give us the strength to live it. For we stand on your truth that says, when your word goes out, it does not return unto you void, but accomplishes the purpose for which it has been sent. And so do a work in us today as we desire to follow after you. Let me decrease now so that you would increase in this word. Come forth as you would have it in the matchless name of Christ Jesus, that wonderful name. Amen. Amen. Remember last week that Peter and John were arrested. We were in Acts 4. And they were arrested for healing a lame man by the gate called Beautiful and proclaiming Jesus as the healer. When brought before the court, so to speak, the religious leaders of the day had them thrown in the jail and then brought them before them for a hearing, Peter shared the entire story with the religious leaders who had plotted against Jesus. In a scathing indictment, Peter tells them boldly that they missed the move of God, that they missed it among them. And they killed the Son of God, the Messiah, God's anointed one. Well, we join our heroes today prior to those events as Luke recounts in a letter to his friend Theophilus the charge given to the disciples when the Savior was ascending into heaven for the final time. Jesus had been crucified. He had died and been buried and on the third day. Jesus got up. Somebody glad he got up? Amen. I'm glad he got up. Jesus got up, and he was resurrected from the dead, and it says that he appeared to the disciples and others at various times. Over a period of 40 days, Jesus was coming and going. <laughs> and when the time came for the Lord to leave so the Holy Spirit could come, Jesus gave his followers this charge. He commissioned them to go out into all the world proclaiming the gospel, the good news. That's what the word gospel means, good news. 
proclaiming the good news. He said, go and tell others what you have learned. Go and tell others what you have seen. Go and tell others what you have believed. He said, believers are his witnesses. You, family and friends, are witnesses of the Lord Jesus Christ. And witnesses have a responsibility to come forward and tell what they know about a thing. Oh, we like to talk about all kinds of stuff. We love to spread the news, amen. I don't know if we're so anxious to spread the good news, but that's the news we should be spreading. As witnesses, we have a responsibility to come forward and tell what we know about Jesus. But before going out, Jesus said, before trying to tell the story, you must receive power. I'm going, I'm going, I have to go so that the Holy Spirit can come. You have been baptized with water, <laughs> but the Holy Spirit will baptize you with fire. Somebody say fire. <laughs> the fire of the Holy Spirit is a quickening of your inner self. It is a bringing to life of your essence. It is an ignition to the light inside you that is connected with your creator, connected to your creator. The fire of the Holy Spirit is an awakening to who you are and whose you are. It is the sense of belonging to God and God's good creation. The fire of the Holy Spirit is the power to overcome, the power to triumph, the power of victory. Is there anybody in the house today who is victorious in the Lord? Hallelujah! Jesus Christ came to give us the victory. The fire of the Holy Spirit stirs up in you that which has been dormant. Somebody ought to know the teaching of the Bible that says that God has guaranteed us our salvation by a deposit of the Holy Spirit given to each of us. And so that which has been dormant is awakened. It is an excitement. It is an anticipation. It is a calling to that which is beyond human flesh. A calling to that which is beyond the temporal and the earth bound. A calling to that which is beyond mortality and finiteness. The fire of the Holy Spirit is a call to our eternal selves. Deep calls unto deep. Holy Spirit fire calls us into the presence of our God and causes us to bow down and worship. Have you ever been so overcome in the Spirit of God that all you could do was fall to your knees and worship the Lord? You have been baptized with water, but the Holy Spirit will baptize you with fire. Open your hearts to receive the baptism of God's Holy Spirit. And once you have received the Holy Spirit, then you have the power to be Christ's witnesses in the world. You witness by sharing what you know about the Lord. Your witness comes in many ways, by your values and tenets in life. We ought to see some things changing about the way that you think. By your attitude towards others, by your priorities, as you live out your days. I remember Charles Stanley, may he rest in peace, saying, you can tell by a person's checkbook and calendar what their priorities in life are. We ought to be able to see by your manner and your mannerisms, by your behavior, public and private. And then, and probably least 
of all, by your speech. The way you carry yourself speaks volumes before you ever say a word. The way you carry yourself shows others who you are and how you regard the Lord as the Lord of your life. Our talk must be reflected in our walk. Come on. We, we got some nice words. Oh, I love the Lord. And the next thing you know, you're cursing out the person standing next to you. Oh, nobody but Jesus. But when you get in trouble, you call everybody else but Jesus. We need to check ourselves. Our priorities are out of whack. We need to let our walk be reflect our talk, our walk be reflected by our talk, or our talk reflect our walk. Now, how do you achieve that? Well, I'm glad you asked. Holy Spirit baptizes you, but you have a part to play. You build your faith and your witness through your own discipline of study and prayer. You cannot be a warrior. I think I heard somebody say they're a warrior. Hallelujah. A warrior this morning. I laughed when I heard her say that. So that's in my sermon. But to be a warrior in the faith, to be a true and faithful witness of Jesus Christ, to sustain a relationship with God, you have to stay in continuous conversation with God through prayer. God has given us a means by which we can grow our faith and become strong warriors of the faith. We have to talk to God about everything. Pray without ceasing. God wants to hear it all. You might not think he cares, but he does. God wants to hear it all. Couple that, that conversation, with a strong discipline of reading and studying God's word. We're on a break now, but starting back in September, we have two weekly Bible studies that you need to make sure you join one. We're here on Tuesdays, or Tuesday tune-up, and it's a midday, and we're on Wednesday nights. You need to join one, because Bible study is, Mother Laura Day used to say, pastor told her many years ago, that's where you get your strength. <laughs> Second Timothy 3.16 exclaims, all scripture is God-breathed and useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness. This is what makes you wise for salvation through faith in Jesus. You must have a word in your heart before you can speak a word out of your mouth. That is why we give you Bibles. <laughs> Hallelujah. Use them, read them, mark them up, memorize them, and get a word in your spirit that you can draw on when you need encouragement in this life. It's important and it's key. Somebody said Bible stands for basic instructions before leaving earth. <laughs> the Lord has given us instructions. Take advantage of them. The word teaches us about God from the beginning of God's history with humankind. We learn about God's love and we learn about God's character by reading our Bibles. From reading the scriptures, we learn to discern the move of God in our own lives and to trust and to believe in difficult circumstances because we read the examples of endurance and encouragement written in the book. Yeah, some of those stories, oh, that's a nice story, but what are you gleaning from it? There are principles that are supposed to guide us in our living with the Lord, in our walk with Jesus Christ, by those stories that are in the book. The scriptures rebuke us when we get off track. God's Holy Spirit in us convicts us about our wrongdoing and helps us understand how our actions or our words do not line up with our faith. Every bit of scripture is God-breathed and useful. Hallelujah. 
And one of those uses is to rebuke us when we get off track. It helps us to know that what we've done or said does not line up with our faith. And then the scriptures correct us, it says, by showing us the way to get back on track. How many know if the Lord doesn't leave you? He doesn't leave you. When you get off track, hallelujah, the Lord nudges you right back on, shows you the correct way to go. God does not give up on us. The scriptures correct us by showing us how to get back on track, to ask forgiveness, and to obey what the Holy Spirit nudges us to do. And through this cycle, we are being trained in righteousness, learning through our trials and perhaps our falls. We fall down, but we get up. Hallelujah. Learning how to get up and watch out for future temptation. <laughs> oh, the enemy got me that time. Can't believe I fell for that. But the next time, I'm going to be ready. The next time, I'm going to have my eyes open. The next time, I'm not going to slip in that same place again. We learn the proper response when we are challenged. <laughs> if everything goes along good all the time, what are you learning? Right? We learn from the things that don't go so good, things that don't go so well. We learn how to lean and depend on Jesus. We learn how to trust in the Lord. We learn how to see how God is moving. We won't always get it right because God says, my ways are not your ways and my thoughts are not your thoughts. We back here, God is, you know, five moves ahead. <laughs> but there are some patterns that you can trace because God knows each of us intimately and knows how to speak to us and work with us. And there are some ways that you can trace and say, okay, this is the way God comes to me. And I can trust that this is God and not the enemy saying this because this is the way God speaks to me. This is the way I get the word from God. When you walk with him and you talk with him, when you are in that continuous conversation, you begin to know him. That's how you know him. And that's how you can discern when it is God who is leading you. And all along the way, our witness that began when we said yes to Jesus, it grows. So that when it is time to talk, come on, when it is time to talk, when your family and friends ask you the reason for your faith. Yeah. When somebody says, what? what do you mean? What, what was getting baptized? What, why did you get baptized today? When others need to hear the good news of salvation in Jesus Christ, then the fire of the Holy Spirit will cause you to speak it. <laughs> and like Peter, come on. You must speak boldly and proclaim the reason for your faith. I heard the choir say last night, you ought to open your mouth and say something. Yeah. Open your mouth and say something. Yeah. You ought to be able to tell somebody why you believe. Yeah. Who the Lord is. What God has done for you. How the Lord has loved you with an everlasting love. And in this case, we need... 
need to tell somebody about Jesus. Tell somebody how God created humankind in his image and loves us with an unconditional love. Tell somebody how though he knew we would sin, though he knew we would grieve his spirit, God created us anyhow because God desires to be in relationship with us. Tell somebody how humankind gave in to temptation, sinned and fell from grace, created a gap between holy God and our sinful selves. Tell somebody how God made a plan before the foundation of the world to redeem us and restore us, to restore our broken relationship. <laughs> Tell somebody how Almighty God did not give up on us, but sent us a Savior. His name is Jesus. Tell somebody that Jesus Christ came in the humblest of estates. Jesus Christ came as a form of a helpless baby. Jesus Christ came and put himself in human 
Please stand to your feet. Why don't you ask the person standing next to you, say, are you saved today? Do you want me to walk down the aisle with you?
And so we must proclaim his name to those that we meet and let them know that there is a life in Christ awaiting them. Tell somebody who Jesus is and what Jesus has done. Amen. Amen. Please receive the benediction. Now unto him who is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before his presence in glory with exceeding joy. <laughs> To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power from this time forth and even.